God is present and welcome back. Today we're going to discuss about the books that are in the Tanakh and also the Old Testament. And here's a question. Do you think that they are the same books? Let's see it. So you may notice that this video here is uh, better than the other one, the first one actually. And here is a result of our uh, study of uh, production and all that and how to better use the instruments that we have. Uh, the next videos, they will be just like the first one because here uh, I'm just uh, redoing the second one because of some technical issues that uh, I had. But this for me is also an example uh, of our uh, pursuit to be in God, that is to feel more connected to Him. Because the more that we study, the more that we know, the more that knowledge that we gather, that we get, um, the better the things work. And, and, and this is for us an example of that. Uh, even the resolution, uh, uh, you can notice the uh, shiny parts of my skin, but uh, all that is an example for us that the more we know about things, the better we see, the better uh, is the resolution of what we are seeing. And that's also seeking to be in God, that is acquiring knowledge but not to be uh, hidden or for us not to use. It's quite the opposite. It's for us to use just like I'm using this right now. So the more knowledge we acquire, the better we can perceive the world around us and our own life and also the perspective of God to all of us. How can we practice his teachings in our lives? With that said, with this uh, short introduction here about the, the quality of this video, uh, let's dive into the different books that are in the Tanakh and also the Old Testament. As I asked in the beginning, do you think they are the same books? Let's see it. Uh, the chances are that most of them are the same, right? Because we're talking about the Hebrew Bible, which we use in the Christian Bible as the Old Testament. Now, there are some books here and there that, that they were added, and this is also uh, a curiosity for us if you uh, don't know about it, but there is a tale and a long tradition about 72 uh, Jewish sages that uh, decided to translate the Tanakh that was written in Hebrew to Greek, which was the common language at the time that it was translated. Now, you're going to have uh, diverse uh, ways of seeing this work of the 72 Jewish sages. Uh, you will see that they happened to translate it because Greek was the common language and Hebrew was the language to prayer and to the scholars and they wanted to spread the knowledge of the Tanakh between their people that were talking uh, Greek. Also, you're going to see uh, this tale that in the Ptolemaic dynasty of Ptolemy II Philadelphus, that is the second king of the Ptolemaic dynasty, he requested specifically to 72 Jewish sages or 70 Jewish sages to translate the, their Bible, the Hebrew Bible, to a common language. So he could also read it and also the others could read it as well. So they translate it according to his request. And now we have the access to the Hebrew Bible, which would be known also as the Septuagint. So Septuagint is a word referring to the 72 Jewish sages that translated to uh, the Old Testament that now we know 
uh, in Greek. But there are divergent uh, books in both of them. That is, the apocryphal books, uh, which only means that they were books put it away from the canonical uh, books of the Tanakh and also the Old Testament. Uh, now, we're going to see that this difference, especially in the Christian Bible, is in the Catholic version and in the Protestant version. You're going to notice that in the Catholic version, you, we have a lot of more books in the Old Testament. With that said, let us now see uh, what are the books present in the Tanakh and also the books present in the Old Testament and compare them to see their difference and also see which are the apocryphal books that were, uh, as the word said, regarded as books that wasn't necessary in the canonical uh, books of the Tanakh and the Old Testament, especially the Protestant version of the Bible, of the Christian Bible. So let's go to our board here and I'm going to be writing the names so you can follow along as well so we can see which books are present in both the Tanakh and also the Old Testament. We have here, as we said in the uh, previous episode, uh, already the comprehension of the meaning of the word Tanakh that is an acronym to uh, the three units of the Hebrew Bible, Torah, Nevi'im, and Ketuvim. And we are now going to see what are the books that are present in those three units. So we have here Torah, which is also uh, known as the law, and brings to us the discussion not only of the Ten Commandments of God, of the Law of God, but also the 613 commandments that are present here in the Pentateuch of Moses. The Torah, which is also the Pentateuch of Moses, have five books, right? The word Pentateuch is a reference to five. So we have here, first book, which is Genesis. The second book. Exodus. The third book. Leviticus. The fourth book. Numbers. And the last book. Deuteronomy. We're going to understand better what uh, and what each book means uh, to our study. Uh, I'm going to proceed here to Ketuvim. Actually, Nevi'im. Nevi'im, which refers to the Na part of Tanah, right, is also uh, the book of the prophets. So, it is the book of all the prophets in the Jewish tradition. And we have uh, a division that is the former prophets and the latter prophets. And inside the latter prophets, we also have the 12 minor prophets. And we are going to understand why and they're called also minor prophets. It's a uh, reference to the number of books, already giving you here a hint. So we have here, I put in another color, the former prophets, which are The color is not helping me more <laughs> here, uh, which are Joshua, so H, Joshua, Judges, 
same rule. And the Book of Kings. And then we have the Latter Prophets. Here, we're going to have Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. And now we have the Minor Prophets. I'm going to put here you know, the color to separate. And we put minor between quotes because it is, as I uh, said, it's only uh, a matter of the number of books. So they are known as the minor prophets because their book is shorter. It's not, uh, there is not much chapters, let's say, as the book of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. So, for being smaller books, they're called minor prophets, but it doesn't mean that they are minor in importance, right? It doesn't, it's not a reference to the quality of the books, but the quantity of those books. And we have here Hosea, Joel. And let me separate here because it's reference to minor prophets. Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Naun. You also have. Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. Now, for Ketuvim, we have here a separation that refers to the writings. And this only means that are all the other books that we find in the Tanakh, that is poetic books, also historical books, and uh, the books of wisdom. That's why in this unit we find the book of Psalms, Proverbs, Job, the Song of Songs, Ruth, Lamentations, wait, oh, it's, it's right, <laughs> Lamentations, Ecclesiastes, Esther, Daniel. This is a and not a not a an M. So we have Daniel, Ezra, Nehemiah, and the last book of Chronicles.
And those are the books that we find in the Tanakh. Now, for the books in the Old Testament, we have uh, a different organization. That is uh, a different separation. We're going to have the Pentateuch, which are the five books of Moses. We're going to have the historical books that, uh, as we'll, you will see, have the books that in the Tanakh are, consider, are considered uh, prophetical books, but also historical books, but they are in the unit of the prophets in the Tanakh. But in the Old Testament, they are in the historical uh, unit, that is the historical division of books that we find in the Old Testament. And we will also have the poetical or wisdom books, and then the prophetic books, which are separated again in major prophets and minor prophets. And uh, repeating what I said earlier about the Tanakh, it doesn't mean uh, in quality. It's not a division in quality. It's a division in quantity. So they are the major prophets because their books are bigger and the others are the minor prophets because their books are smaller. So that's the vision that we will see here. And I will, will also put the apocryphal books that we find in the Catholic version of the Christian Bible. They are considered uh, deteriocanonical. That's the word. It's a hard word, but they are considered deteriocanonical, which means that they are part of the canon, but I wouldn't say that they are not important, but they are books that are there. <laughs> they help us uh, see other perspectives uh, referencing the prophecies and also the historical content of the Bible. But the Protestant version of the Christian Bible don't, con don't consider them as canonical. So they're not part of the Protestant version of the Christian Bible that uh, we commonly find in all uh, the, the libraries and also uh, the bookstores. We actually use more the Protestant version of the Christian Bible than the Catholic version of the Christian Bible. Now, would that mean that um, I shouldn't then study those apocryphal books? No, you can study them. As we said in the previous episode, here we are studying all the books of the Holy Bible in a way that we can find uh, the way for us to be in God and also extract the truth of God that will set us spiritually free to have a life in the love of God that was taught by Christ, by Jesus Christ. Now, uh, when we study those books, we also have to be careful and uh, really dive into the symbolisms and also the references that they do uh, in uh, their narratives. So, uh, going back here to uh, our board, as we said, we are going to have this uh, division of the Old Testament or the uh, Catholic and Protestant version of the Bible in four parts. So the first one is the Pentateuch. Which we already know are the five books of Moses. They don't change in that uh, uh, division, that organization. And then we're going to have the historical books. And those historical books uh, are Joshua, Judges, 
Ruth, Kings, Chronicles, which are also called Paralipomenon, and uh, also uh, the Chronicles. Let me just correct this here. It's C H R O. And then we're going to have Ezra Nehemiah. Esther. And now, the apocryphal books, or one of the versions of the Christian Bible. And they are Tobit, and Judith, and the book of Maccabees. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but we are we have here some books that are part of the uh, prophet unit of the Tanakh, and they are all of these books here: Joshua, Judges, Ruth, Kings, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Now they are. Uh, some of them are part of the former prophets, others, the latter prophets, the minor, the 12 minor prophets, as we saw as well. And that is which one? I think you got it right. Joshua, Judges, and Kings, they're part of the former prophets in the Tanakh. The other ones here, uh, especially Chronicles, it's part of the Ketuvim, the writings. Then we're going to have the third division, the Bible, that is the poetical or wisdom books. Poetical, Snell, <laughs> uh, or wisdom books. And they are in here. We already start with an apocrypha uh, book that is the prayer of Manasseh. And then we're going to have Book of Job, Psalms. Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs, Wisdom of Solomon, The Wisdom of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus. And then we have the last one that is the Psalm of Solomon. going to the fourth and last unit of the Christian Bible that is a division right 
way that they organize the books and that that is the books of the prophets, the prophetic books. And uh, we have here major prophets. We're putting here another color. And those are Isaiah. Also, Jeremiah. The Book of Lamentations is considered here, in this case, prophetic book. But this book in the Tanakh is where? You remember? Right. Ketuvim, the writings. And then we have Ezekiel. Daniel. And Baruch. Can you know if this book is canonical or apocryphal? Apocryphal? Remember the color that I put it. So now, oh, wait. Uh, I put here in white and in blue. Now we have the minor prophets. Those are Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah. Jonah, Micah, Down, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Agai, Zechariah, Malachi, and also three other books that are the apocryphal ones. Those are the letter of Jeremiah. Susanna and the last one Bell and the Dragon let me squish this name here Bell and the Dragon right so those are the books in the Catholic and Protestant version of the Christian Bible or of the Bible uh, especially the Old Testament. And now for the New Testament, how it is divided, how it is organized. In the New Testament, we have, as we're going to see, 27 books, and all of them were written in Greek. Now, what is interesting about that is to think uh, of the purpose of the evangelists, what they were trying to achieve with that, because the New Testament of the Holy Bible are the is the reunion of the life and teachings of Jesus Christ, as well as the acts and letters of his disciples. And we have also the last book, 
of the final prophecies, the Apocalypse, or the Revelation of Jesus Christ. And uh, thinking on the intention behind uh, of the evangelists to write in Greek, or the apostles to write in Greek, we understand that they were trying to make it public. They were trying to make the knowledge of the New Testament public so anyone could read it, because that was their mission, to spread the gospel of the kingdom of God, as Christ told to the twelve disciples, uh, to, to the eleven apostles uh, right before his ascension to the heavens, to be with God. And this makes us remember uh, of that tale of the Septuagint, the work of making knowledge known public. And that's interesting because if you think about it, any knowledge that try to maintain itself hidden will eventually be known. It is as Jesus Christ tells us in his gospel. There is nothing hidden that won't be known. That's uh, something that happens in our lives. Any knowledge, anything that it's kept in secret will eventually become public. That's because the knowledge is necessary for us to see the world with uh, more resolution, with more clarity. Now, let's see what are the books in uh, the New Testament, the 27 books. So we have in the New Testament, Twenty-seven books, and they are separated, also organized. First, in the Synoptic uh, Gospels, and this means that the passages between those Gospels are very similar. So we have the Gospel of Jesus according to Matthew. Then, according to Mark, according to Luke, and I'm going to just put a symbol here, uh, a line here. The Gospel of Jesus according to John. And why is that? Because even though we find similar passages of Matthew, Mark, Luke in the Gospel of Jesus according to John, we will see very unique passages in the last gospel. And this puts uh, this book already in a different position of the synoptic gospels, because not all the passages are similar. And then we have the Acts of the Apostles. So let me draw a line here. I have the Acts of the Apostles, which narrates uh, the life of the Apostles after the ascension of Jesus Christ to the heavens. And then we will have the letters. The letters are 13 letters or 13 books, as we understand that the Holy Bible is a gathering of different books. And then we have here the letters of Paul. So let me put in another color for us to also see the letters of Paul. And these letters are to the Romans. Corinthians 1 and 2nd, that, that is 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Wait, this is an A and N. 
Then we have Ephesians, oh, uh, sorry, Galatians. I'm doing here. Then Ephesians. The letter for two Philippians. Colossians the first and second letters to the Thessalonians then first and second letters to Timothy Then the letter to Titus, Philemon, and Hebrews. And then we have the letters of Peter, which are uh, separated in first and second. So it's not Peter's, it's Peter. <laughs> first, uh, wait, let me change here. First and second letters, letters of Peter. Then we have the letter of James, put in another color because I'm putting the names, the apostles in a different color. So we have the letter of James, and then we have the letters of John. These letters here are separated in numbers. So we have the first, the second, and the third uh, letters the third letter of John. And the last one is the letter of Jude. And the last book of the New Testament is the Apocalypse. Oh wait, it's too separated. Let me put it again. It's the Apocalypse. of Jesus or Revelation as we will find in the Bible the book of Revelations of whom? of Jesus Christ so it's the Apocalypse of Jesus or the book of Revelations Revelation of let me put this right of Jesus Christ. And those are the 27 uh, books that we find in the New Testament. You may ask, there are apocryphal books in the New Testament? The answer is yes, there are. I'm just not going to put them here because it's uh, a lot of books, but that's not what we're going to get into in this series here because, as I said, the first part we're going to be discussing about the Tanakh. Now, uh, one book that we really have to pay attention, and this is one of the books in the New Testament, is the Apocalypse of Jesus. And why is that? Because uh, the late proclaimer, Roger Alziru Zarur, of the church that I am uh, from, of the church that I am from, religion of God, of the Christ, and of the Holy Spirit, teaches us that the Apocalypse of Jesus is the modern good news. That is, it is a gospel, because the word gospel means good news, for 
this moment. It is modern. We will always discuss about its symbolisms. We can see that in movies, in TV shows, in debates. The apocalypse is also, uh, it's always a recurring topic, uh, sometimes seen in a pessimistic way, but actually is very optimistic. It's very uh, realistic as well, brings us notions and visions of the world through prophecies in a way that we can change the world, we can make it better and prepare the pathways for Christ's triumphal return. And all that we can find uh, discussed in the book of uh, Brother Paivaneto that is entitled, We Are Prophets. We are all prophets of uh, Paivaneto. Uh, in this book, Brother Paivaneto is discussing about the symbolisms of the apocalypse, which is, as I said, an important book for nowadays because it is the modern good news as we already uh, understand. And I have here the Portuguese uh, version, but I hope that one day we're going to have the English version as well for us to be discussing here and, and studying more and more about the apocalypse with all these sources and, and different materials that we find about the symbolisms of the apocalypse as well. But now we are going to focus in the Tanakh, in the Hebrew Bible, and then work our way towards the New Testament to then get to the Apocalypse in the New Testament. But that's it for uh, this video. I hope that you enjoyed uh, knowing the division that is made in the Tanakh and also in the Old Testament so we can better understand what is happening, right? Uh, when we organize things is for us to see in a or try to see in a timeline or in topics how things are happening how uh, this is connected to that how this is a consequence of uh, that other cause or uh, what action you started this reaction and all that so organization when we try to organize when we, we work to make things uh, stay in the orderly manner we are trying to understand better the world to extract a knowledge that will make us see the world better to have and in this case to have the perspective of God of all of us and especially of the world of our purpose here of the meaning of everything that we are doing here in this world and we finish by wishing you that the light of the Christ be the north of your life. Jesus lives in our hearts forever.